Good afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year. Welcome to our Sunday worship service. We're glad that you have joined in today's service. We also want to welcome all visitors who are worshiping with us today. Our call to worship. People of the world, it is time to celebrate new beginnings. Let us step into the new year with faith. People of faith, it is time to look ahead and hope. Let us step into the unknown with hope. People of hope, it is time to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Let us step forward together as, as God's family. The voices of praise will now come before us with the song, Victory in Jesus. Today, I hymn a praise. It's gonna be on page 511 in your hymn note. Victory in Jesus. You know the words. Come on, sing along with us.
Thank you, Voices of Praise. And that was a wonderful song to start off this new year. At this time, Sister Doris Soren will come to us with, an, with the invocation, which um, followed by Brother Willie Tyler, who will lead us in the affirmation of faith. Let us pray. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest flame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other grounds is sinking sand. Father God, we come to you this afternoon with thanksgiving in our hearts, rejoicing to give you all praise and honor that is due you. Come, come, let us worship in the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Let us give him honor and praise on this day. Father God, we are rejoicing that you have given us another chance and we say thank you. Oh Lord, grant us to love thee with all our heart, our mind, our strength, and to love our neighbors as we love you. Father God, we ask that you forgive us of all our sins Amen. through word or deed on this day. And then Father God, fill our hearts with love, kindness, and compassion. Father God, cleanse our hearts and minds for we can worship you in our fullness today. Father God, I'm asking that you will open our ears so that we may hear your voice, open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom, and Lord, open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Father God, as we celebrate the first Sunday of a new year, I'm asking that you take control of this worship service and let it be what you would have it to be. Lord God, bless each person that is on this virtual worship service today. Lord, whatever their needs are, if it is your will to fulfill it in the name of Jesus. Bless our pastor and our first lady. Grant them wisdom, Lord, and knowledge to do your will. And also, Lord, bless our pastor that he will bring a powerful, powerful message that would help us, your children, to have a closer, a closer walk with you and become more Christ-like. Again, Father, again, Father God, I ask you to bless this worship service and your people in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. And amen. Let us unite in our Christian, let us unite in our historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, makers of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hands of God the Father Almighty, from which he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communions of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let the church say amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Thorne, and thank you, Brother Tyler, for your contributions to this morning's service. At this time, we will have the Ministry of Music by the Voices of Praise, and that song will be One Step.
Thank you for that selection. That's true. One step and he will do the rest. At this time, we will have the scripture reading. First John verses one through 18. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was, he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things are made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the light to become children of God. Children born not of the natural descent, nor of human, human decision on a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwellings among us. We, were seen, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and hope. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me was surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, he had all received grace and place and grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is with himself, God, and is in closest relationship with the father has made him known. I have read this blessed word for all of the hearers. Amen. At this time, we will have a member of the steward board come with the offering appeal. Happy New Year, everybody. I've come to you from Russell Temple, uh, from greetings from the steward board, Russell Temple members and visitors. Happy New Year. Um, it is time for giving now. Praise God. I'm going to read a scripture regarding uh, giving the offering, and it comes from 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not gradually or of necessity. And that comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 9, 6, 7, I'm sorry. Okay, there are four ways that you can see on the screen right now. You can give on Givelify, go to your Givelify app, and then there's a cash app, or you can mail it. To Russell Temple, our address is 507 North Alfred Street, Alexander, Virginia, um, and the zip code is 22314. Or you can drop it off on the mail slot on the door, uh, place that in there as well, 507 North Alfred Street, Alexander, Virginia. And or uh, Russell, one of our members will be grateful, more than grateful to come by to pick it up for you if you are not able to do it. But please, note your checks and envelopes, what you, your offering is for, so we can uh, make notation of that. That'd be uh, uh, great. Thank you so much. And everyone have a blessed day and happy new year again. Praise God. Thank you so much to our recording steward, Sister Diana Murphy. Good afternoon, church family and happy new year. Peace and blessings, love and joy be with all of you. As we prepare our offerings of this afternoon, at the close of last Sunday's worship experience, I reminded you that this is the time normally when we receive an offering for Phillips School of Theology, the uh, Theological Seminary of the CME Church. And we would like to uh, contribute our benevolent offering to that cause. So as I appealed to you last Sunday at the close of the worship hour, I appeal to you this morning to prepare our offerings to please uh, be as generous as we can with our benevolent offering so that we might be a blessing to the Phillips School of Theology, the only theological seminary that our church has. We have four undergraduate colleges, but Phillips is our only theological seminary. And all of the persons who go to Phillips to prepare themselves for ministry receive a 50% tuition uh, scholarship. What a blessing. 
So we encourage uh, the people of God to be a blessing to our theological seminary. Thank you so much. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your faithful giving. Thank you for your stewardship. Thank you, Sister Murphy, and thank you, Pastor A.G., for those offering appeals. At this time, we will continue the worship service through the Ministry of Music, Holy, 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 by the 250 Voice Mass Choir, after which Pastor A.G. will deliver the gospel message. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. God is an awesome God, isn't that right? Praise God, praise God. Wasn't that a beautiful rendition by that mass choir of holy, 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 amen. God is an awesome God. Certainly we thank uh, our voices of praise for the beautiful renditions of the selections that you shared with us this morning. We give God thanks and praise for our worship leader this morning, this afternoon, rather, Sister Lillian Harrison. It is morning in the other time zones in the United States, but it's afternoon in the Eastern time zone, amen. Uh, and we give God thanks and praise for all who have participated in our order of service on this afternoon. I greet you one more time in the peace, love, and joy of Jesus on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Amen. The sun even peaked out for a little while, not too long ago, but that's not what made it a beautiful day. Amen. Matter of fact, the sun, the sun went back behind the clouds now, but guess what? It's a beautiful day because the Lord enabled us to live, move, and breathe. Isn't that right? It's a beautiful day because the Lord woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Isn't that right? It's a beautiful day because we exist. Isn't that right? It's a beautiful day because we have an opportunity to gather together for worship one more time. Isn't that right? It's a beautiful day because we have another opportunity to receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Isn't that right? It's a beautiful day because we can walk and, 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 and we can talk and, and, and we can breathe. Isn't that right? We can see, we can hear. Isn't that right? We can smell, we can speak. Isn't that right? It's a beautiful day just because the Lord is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Our scripture was read for your hearing by our worship leader, our Sister Lillian, from the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John, the fourth gospel. At this time, I just want to call your attention to verse one, the gospel according to St. John chapter one, verse one. In the New Revised Standard Version, you find these words, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. As we gather together for the first Sunday and the first Holy Communion Sunday of a brand new year, I want you to think, reflect, meditate, and pray with me on the thought, and the word was God. And the word was God. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. And the word was God. Beloved, that phrase, that phrase is really practically the center of the doctrine of the Christian religion. And the word was God. That phrase tells us what it is that distinguishes Christianity from any other world religion. Even the three Abrahamic 
of world, of world religions, even the three major religions that profess belief in one God, specifically uh, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. But that phrase, and the word was God, is what distinguishes Christianity from any other faith tradition. That one phrase, and the word was God, is what makes Christianity unique. Only Christians profess to serve a God who became human flesh and dwelled among us. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You may notice that in most English translations, the word word is capitalized. The word word is spelled with a capital W. In that instance, where you see in the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John, now the Greek word for word is logos, no matter how you no matter how you find it. But when you see the Greek word logos or the English word word spelled with a capital W, that 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 word means divine manifestation. Amen. That's what the logos is. That's what the word with a capital W is: the divine manifestation in the beginning was the divine manifestation and the divine manifestation was with God and the divine manifestation was God. Hallelujah. That's what the Christian message is all about. And if you scroll down or if you uh, look down, if you're not scrolling on a device, some folk do have, some folk do open real, you know, regular Bibles with paper, amen, and leather binding or some other type of binding. But whether you're scrolling or whether you're looking at a hard copy of the Bible, if you look down to verse 14, and the divine manifestation became flesh, and lived among us, hallelujah. We have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and full of truth, hallelujah. And then if you move on down to verse 18, in my instance, I scroll down, amen. If you move on down to verse 18, it says, no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, my, my, my. It is God, the only son, I love the language in the New Revised Standard Version. It is God the only Son. In other words, Jesus is God. Hallelujah. That's what the Christian faith is all about. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. My friends, that's what our faith is all about. We believe in a God who thought it not robbery, to come down from his throne of glory, to become human flesh, and to dwell among us, and to allow us to experience the fullness of his glory. He experienced almost everything that we could possibly experience. The only difference is because he's God, he could not commit any sins. Hello, somebody. He could not make any mistakes. But other than that, we serve a God. We serve a Savior. We serve a Lord who has experienced everything that we as human beings could ever experience. One of the beautiful things that I love about the writings of John, and not just the gospel according to St. John, but you see some of it in the three general epistles of John, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. You also see it in the book of Revelation. But it's in the writings of John in the New Testament where Jesus most fully describes his own nature. Amen. It's in the writings of John where Jesus has the most to say about his own nature. Isn't that right? And one of the things that Jesus says in multiple places in the writings of John is that he reminds us that he is indeed God in the form of human flesh, that he is indeed a God who came to dwell among us, and that he is indeed one with God the Father. For example, in those very comforting, encouraging words that we find in the 14th chapter of the gospel, according to St. John, words which Jesus shared before he gave himself up uh, on our behalf, before he laid down his life and shed his blood and took his life back up again for our behalf, on our behalf. In John 14 and 7, Jesus says, if you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. My, my, my. And that, that's what Jesus says about himself. In John 14, 9, it, Jesus says, whoever has seen me 
has seen the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. In that encouragement, if we have seen Jesus, we have seen the Father. Now, granted, we are here more than 2,000 years after the incarnation, so we did not have the blessing of the same manifestation that the apostles had in the first century. However, we have the assurance that Jesus is indeed coming back in his glory to judge both the living and the dead. We have the blessed assurance that Jesus is indeed one with the Father. Not too long before Jesus sacrificed himself for us, in the 17th chapter of the gospel, according to John, the fourth gospel, Jesus prayed for us. He prayed a lengthy prayer. He prayed a beautiful prayer for us. In the midst of that prayer, two of the things that he said in that prayer, in verse five, he said, so now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. That is to say, I was with, I was in the kingdom of heaven in the beginning. Isn't that right? I was at the right hand of the Father in the very beginning. Isn't that right? I was always God in the very beginning. One of the reasons why we selected holy, holy, holy for the hymn of preparation today is because it, 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 it talks about probably the greatest mystery in the Christian church. If you look at all the doctrine of the Christian church, and make no mistake, God is a mystery, isn't that right? None of us will fully understand the mystery of God. I don't care how long you've been saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You will never fully understand the mystery of God. I don't care how many times you've taught Sunday church school or taught Bible study for that matter, or how many sermons you've preached. You'll never fully understand the mystery of God. I don't care how much formal education you have. I've been through two seminary degree programs and I will never fully understand the mystery of God. And, and the doctrine of the Trinity might be the greatest mystery of God of all of the, of the basic tenets and precepts of all of the doctrine of the Christian church. The doctrine of the Trinity may be the most mysterious. But as you listen to that beautiful rendition of holy, 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 you'll notice that both the first stanza and the fourth stanza ended with the words, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. That is to say that God the Father is fully God, that Jesus the Son, the only begotten of the Father, is fully God, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is fully God. God in all three persons is fully God. Jesus, the Savior of the world, is God in human flesh. God made flesh. The Word, the Logos, the divine manifestation, who became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and full of truth. Jesus is fully God. I love the way in the Pauline epistles, I love the way Paul says it in the first chapter of his epistle to the Colossians. In verse 15, Paul says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, it says, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Isn't that powerful? In him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Doesn't that sound like what we read in the fourth gospel this afternoon in, in John chapter one, verse 18, where it says, no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. It is God the only Son. God the only Son is Jesus. Isn't that right? It is Jesus who has made God fully known. Is that not what the Hebrew scripture or the Old Testament prophecy told us? Is that not what the prophet of the Lord told us in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14? And we see that prophecy revealed as we read the story of the nativity, focusing on Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Is that prophecy not fulfilled where we were told, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and ye should call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isn't that right? That's why in the great Advent and Christmas time hymn, 
by Charles Wesley Hart, the Herald Angels sing. That's why one of the couplets in one of the stanzas says, please, as men with men to appear, Jesus, our Emmanuel here. A more contemporary English translation of that same stanza translates that couplet, please, there's flesh with flesh to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel. Beloved, that's what the Christian faith is all about. Jesus is our Emmanuel. Jesus is our God with us. Amen. Jesus is God. Jesus has already always been God, and Jesus always will be God. That's why in the book of Revelation, in multiple places, Jesus describes himself as the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Isn't that right? As a matter of fact, the end of the second stanza, that great hymn that we just heard, the Holy, Holy, Holy says, which worked and art and evermore shall be. That means that Jesus is God and Jesus as God is pre-existent and Jesus is God and as God, he is present in us and with us and among us right now. And just as he is pre-existent and he is present, he is also eternal and evermore will be God. How somebody ought to shout hallelujah of the assurance of a pre-existent and ever-present and an eternal God. Jesus is God in the form of human flesh. As a matter of fact, a further de demonstration that Jesus is God and has already been, always been God, is the giving Jesus credit for being an active participant in creation. Hear the words from verses two and three in John chapter one in the New Revised Standard it said, version it says, he was in the beginning with God. It says all things came into being through him and without him, not one thing came into being. Amen. That's powerful. Where, that, where, where, where all things came into being through him and without him, not one thing came into being. If y'all like the King James a little bit better, the King James says without him was not anything made. That was made, isn't that right? The fact of the matter is without Jesus, who is God, without the word, who was God, without the word, who is God, and without the word, who evermore shall be God, we wouldn't even exist, isn't that right? There's a hymn writer by the name of Kenneth Morris that composed a hymn entitled Christ is All. The refrain of the chorus from that beautiful hymn says, Christ is all, he's all, he's everything to me. Christ is all, he rules the land and sea. Christ is all, without him, nothing could be. Christ is all, all in all, this world to me. Beloved, the center of the Christian message is that the word was God, that the word is God. But still, that God fought it not robbery to come down out of glory for a little while. According to the tradition, he was clothed in human flesh for approximately 33 years, from approximately 4 BC to 29 AD. According to the tradition, he existed on the face of the earth in the form of human flesh. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so grateful that God thought it not robbery to give up some of his glory so that we might see a glimpse of the fullness of his glory here on earth. Isn't that right? I, I, I love the words that Apostle Paul shared in Philippians chapter two, beginning at verse six. It says that even though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God as something to be exploited. But the word says he emptied himself. He took on the form of a slave. Amen. Amen. Doulos, that, 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 that couple of different Greek words that are translated servant in the New Testament. That would mean slave. Isn't that right? He emptied himself. He took on the form of a slave and became obedient to the point of death, even death upon the cross. Sometimes we can get, get so focused on the divinity of Jesus that we forget about the humanity of Jesus. It was in his humanity that he bore the brunt of the burden of our sins. It's in his humanity that he shed his precious blood for us. It's in his humanity that he allowed himself to experience the, the excruciating pain of the most cruel and inhumane form of capital punishment in the history of humankind. It was in his humanity that he went to the cross. It was in his humanity 
that they nailed his hands and feet to the wooden cross, the old rugged cross. It is in his humanity that they put the crown of thorns on his head. It is in his humanity that they pierced him in his side. It is in his humanity that they mocked him. It is in his humanity that they beat him. It is in his humanity that they spit on him. It is in his humanity that he experienced all of the degradation and dehumanization on our behalf. But thanks be to God because he was willing to do all of that. The letter to the Philippians from the Apostle Paul says that he was given a name that is above every name. Isn't that right? That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. That's why the writer of the general epistle to the Hebrews says that we do not serve a high priest who could not identify with our agony and our suffering. Isn't that right? The, the, the general epistle to the Hebrews reminds us that we serve a high priest. We serve a Lord. We serve a Savior. We serve a Master. We serve a God who has experienced everything that we could ever possibly experience. The only difference is he did not sin. That's one of the reasons why I love so much the uh, the, 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 the Hawkins Singers uh, version of Be Grateful from back in the day. God decided to feel your longing every pain that you feel he feels it just like you but he can't afford to let you feel only good then you won't appreciate the good times aren't you grateful that you serve a god who's been through everything that we've been through aren't you grateful that you serve a god who has experienced everything we could possibly experience he's experienced sorrow he's experienced grief he's experienced fatigue He's experienced hunger, isn't that right? He's experienced disrespect. He's experienced betrayal, betrayal from folks who are supposed to be the closest to him, isn't that right? Everything you can imagine that he's been through, including physical death, he's been through it on our behalf. But thanks be to God, when he died, that was not the end of the story, isn't that right? For in the fourth gospel where Jesus proclaims his divinity, where Jesus proclaims that he is one with God the Father. He made another bold proclamation in the 10th chapter where it deals with Jesus, the good shepherd. Isn't that right? Jesus said, nobody took my life from me. I laid it down. Isn't that right? I had the power to lay it down, and I had the power to take it back up again. Isn't that good news? He had the power to take it back up again. Only God could do that. Isn't that right? Only God could lay down a life and have the power to take it back up again. Only God can forgive for all of the human race of our sins. My brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, on this first Sunday of a brand new year, this is the center of what we believe as Christians. This is the center of the Christian message. Jesus is God. Jesus was God from the beginning. Jesus is God right now. Jesus evermore will be God. And the word was God. Somebody give God some praise in the chat. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There may be someone this afternoon who would like to commit his or her life to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. My friends, it's really much more simple than, uh, than some folk may believe. It's really simple to be 100% certain that your soul is saved and that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life and that you will have life everlasting whenever Jesus comes again in his glory to judge both the living and the dead. It's this simple. In Romans 10, 9, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. You shall be saved. It's just that simple. If there is one this afternoon who would like to make that commitment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who would like to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to receive you in the kingdom of heaven, we invite you to do so this afternoon. It's very easy to make a public confession of your faith. You can, uh, if you want, if you're bold enough, you can, you can share a public message right here in the chat that everybody can see. 
you know, we'll reach out to you. Amen. If you don't want to share it with everybody, amen, with every device online, you can send me a private message. Amen. You can send me a private message in the chat. Amen. You can text me a private message. You can call me on my personal cell phone number. It's there on the screen in the chat for those who are watching on the screen. Area code 201. 736-9107. I used to pass in Jersey City, so I've had the same phone number for 20-some years. Amen. My wife and I both, but 201-736-9107. That's my personal cell number. You can call me. You can text me. Amen. Or if you want to send a private message by another medium, amen. I'm on, on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on Instagram. You can send me a private message on any one of those media and I'll respond to you as soon as possible, amen. But what's most important is we want everybody to be a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus wants everybody to be a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus wants everybody to be redeemed. We talked about God's grace and mercy in church school this morning. Isn't that right? God is gracious. Isn't that right? God is merciful. My Lord, his grace is unlimited. His mercy is everlasting. Amen. God is gracious and merciful. God does not want anybody to be lost. Amen. God wants everybody to be redeemed. If there's someone who wants to recommit or rededicate your life to the Lord, please feel free to do so by the same means as anyone who wants to make a new commitment to Christ Jesus, our Lord. And if there's anyone looking for a church home, we would love to have you at Russell Temple, a loving congregation, a genuine Bible teaching, Bible believing congregation, a congregation of faithful people who are people of faith. We'd love to have you on this afternoon, even though we're on Zoom and Facebook and, and, and other social media and instead of in the physical church edifice, make no mistake about it. The doors of the church are wide open on the hinges of welcome and always are and always will be. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. Will you come this afternoon? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the many wonderful blessings you have bestowed upon us. Lord God, we give you thanks and we give you praise that people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Lord God, we thank you for being that light for being that life who is the light of all human beings. We thank you, Lord, for being the light of the world. We thank you, O oh God, for guiding us by your light. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for life, health, and strength. We pray, O oh God, that you would lay your hand of healing upon all of our brothers and sisters facing health challenges. We pray, O oh God, that you would lay your hand of healing upon all of our saints who are homebound and confined to various institutions, healthcare institutions. Lord God, we pray your comfort, strength, and peace upon all of our brothers and sisters who have suffered loss and grief. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you for bringing us through another holiday season. We pray, O oh God, your continued strength upon those for whom the holidays are a difficult time. And Lord God, we just pray that you will bless each and every one of us with a safe, healthy, and prosperous new year. In the precious name of Jesus, our Christ, the Logos, who became flesh and dwelt among us, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Uh, you notice uh, that fourth verse of uh, the text from John 1 today says that, uh, that Logos, Jesus, the word, was the light of all people. Amen. And one of the other proclamations that Jesus makes about himself in the fourth gospel in two different places, in both chapter eight and chapter nine, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Amen. In one of those places, Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. Praise God for Jesus, the light of the world. This time, beloved, we want to make preparation for the first time in a brand new year to receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. We invite uh, the uh, the household priests, as Bishop Walker would remind us, those who are the priests of our household, to prepare your elements for distribution if you have not already. Now I'll go through the process of cleansing my hands, amen, before I prepare to administer uh, the sacrament uh, to my wife and to you, amen. What a blessing it is to be able to celebrate the sacrament 
of the Lord's Supper. This is another thing that distinguishes Christianity from every other faith tradition. Amen. This opportunity to commemorate and celebrate what Jesus did for us on the cross. Let me extend to you now an invitation uh, to supper. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to almighty God. For those of you who are watching on the Zoom, the prayer of general confession is on your screen. I invite you to pray with me, the prayer of general confession in your own setting. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against our divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, beloved, our prayer of consecration over the elements. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, the remembrance of his de death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, after he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. Again, after he given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood, the New Testament, shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink of it in remembrance of me. Amen. Beloved, the bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was broken for you to preserve your souls and bodies unto everlasting life. Now, beloved, I invite you to take the bread. And if you would, I ask you to break it if you have the unleavened host, or even if you have a cracker, some of the matzo, something that you can break, would you break it? And let us eat together and remember that Christ died for us. And let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. My beloved, the cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you, preserve of your soul and body unto everlasting life. Let us take the cup. And let us drink together and remember that Christ's blood was shed for us and be thankful. Now, beloved, I invite us to pray together the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah.
I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. His blood came streaming down. His blood came streaming down. His blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Give God some praise if you know he's coming back again. Amen. Hallelujah.
time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much. Uh, if you allow the pastor a couple of moments before we have the uh, doxology and the benediction. Uh, first, I would like to say thank you again. Uh, we did express our gratitude on last Sunday, but thank you so much, uh, church family, to all of you who thought it not robbery to show love uh, to your pastor and your first lady uh, during the holiday season. We appreciate you, and we are so grateful for what you've done. Um, certainly, we're blessed to be able to do what we normally do uh, for, for our, our senior population and for a couple of our friends of ours who are retired ministers, amen, and Reverend A. Shirley Clanton wanted me to make sure that I thank the Russell Temple Church family for her gift. She called me the day she got it, amen. So she wanted to express her, her gratitude, and I'm certain that everyone who received one of those gifts is very grateful. So thank all of you for having the heart to do that on a regular basis. I also would like to thank all of you for worshiping with us for watch night service. Uh, I do apologize for those who had some difficulty getting in due to some technical uh, glitches. I know for a while it maxed out at 100. They eventually got it straightened out and eventually we ended up with about 160 or 170 devices on. But thank you so much for worshiping with us as we came together for watch night service. So we appreciate you. As you watch the announcements on the screen, those of you who are watching the screen, you may have noticed that we mentioned our Martin Luther King Day uh, project. Not only what our, our team is doing here at Russell Temple to observe Martin Luther King uh, Day on the third Sunday in January, which is the day between his actual birthday and the national holiday, but all of the churches of the Washington, Virginia District of the CME Church have been asked to do something in commemoration of Dr. King's uh, life and legacy. We can either do it on his birth date, Saturday, January 15th, or we can do it on the national holiday, Monday, January the 17th. It could be a service project. It could be just about anything. It could be advocacy, the King Center for Nonviolent Social Change asked that some folk not celebrate the holiday, but that we advocate for voting rights. But the bottom line is we want to give service, isn't that right? The theme that is often used is a day on, not a day off, amen. So even though we might be off from our secular jobs, we want to be on in terms of serving humanity, amen. Dr. King, when he was living once said, some folk are so heaven bound, they aren't any earthly good, hallelujah. We don't want to do that, amen. We want to do some earthly good, amen. I ain't gonna to go too much in that because I'm thinking about when I'm gonna preach on that, on that day when we have worship service, but God is an awesome God. So we encourage Russell Temple to do what you do. I know you do great things, amen. We did give churches the option of collaborating, partnering with other churches, amen. But uh, please do what you do. And hopefully somebody will somebody record a little bit so we can share it because on Saturday, January the 20, um, Saturday, January the 22nd, we're gonna have a district-wide day of prayer. We ain't gonna pray all day now. We, we only gonna be on Zoom for a couple of hours, but Saturday, January the 22nd, we're gonna have a prayer service and we'll be praying for some things, for love, joy, peace, et cetera. But we're also gonna share some highlights of what the churches on the district have done for Dr. King's day. So we invite you to be a part of that. Last but not least, well, this is not last, this is next to the last, Y'all saw also Youth and Young Adult Week. You saw that on the slide. Well, Russell Temple has been asked to host a Young Adult Revival on the Thursday night of Youth and Young Adult Week, which will be, um, the date will be February the 3rd, uh, Thursday, February the 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The guest preacher will be the dynamic Reverend Zachary Mullins, the new pastor of the Phillips Metropolitan CME Church in Hartford, Connecticut. He's confirmed, amen. He signed, sealed, and delivered, amen. He confirmed via, via Facebook Instant Messenger, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to email him a confirmation letter, but Doc, the Reverend Dr. Mullins is confirmed, great pastor, also one of the uh, officers of the Connection of Young Adult Ministry. Uh, the CME Church. We look forward to a powerful message. We look forward to celebrating the week of activities. And last but not least, we want to encourage uh, all of us to support our missionaries on next Sunday for our Helena B. Cobb Day and support our Helena B. Cobb scholarship. So many of our young people have been helped with those scholarships. And one of the beautiful things about those missionary scholarships is, you know, they start one year 
and the students received those scholarships all four years. Hello, somebody. All four years as they matriculate through undergrad, they continue to receive those scholarships. So we thank our missionaries for the investment in our young people's uh, education. And we thank uh, Russell Temple for having a great uh, missionary society. But guess what? You know, my philosophy and my theology of ministry is that every member of the body of Christ is a missionary, whether you're a member of the society or not. So we look forward to working with our missionaries. Thank you. Thank God for you. Thank God for your support. Heaven smile upon you. And again, to everyone whom I may not have seen or talked to since last year, y'all know two days ago it was last year. Happy New Year. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Have a wonderful day. If all hearts and minds are clear, I think we're ready for the doxology and benediction. Praise God as we prepare to get a benediction, although the officiant um, did the entire communion ritual and laity led us in worship, we want to give God thanks and praise for the presence of the Reverend soon-to-be Dr. Alfreda Jackson and the Reverend Daniel Wynn. We want to give thanks and praise for our ordained ministers on today. Now, beloved, let us be dismissed with God's blessing. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Let the church say, amen. amen.